Thanks, Ivana. Thank you for, for having us here today um, to, to discuss young people's mental health and physical activity. Whilst we've been delivering adult-based mental health programmes for a number of years, um, this is an emerging area of work for us uh, in the physical activity at Mind. And I guess what we've done today is tried to uh, weave them together some of the, the mapping work that we've been completing um, prior to the pandemic, uh, along with some of our recent young people's work completed through surveys and interviews. And we've just com commissioned a, a large piece of, of scoping work uh, with young people being delivered by the, the agency called And Then. Of course, we'll also outline the plans for the rest of the year and how you can get involved in really shaping them to make sure that we support you to support young people. But before we kick off, I want to get a sense of who's in the room today and firstly how confident you feel. So hopefully we're going to launch a poll um, and Richard's going to uh, do that for us. So it's going to appear. So I'd like to know how confident do you feel about supporting young people um, in your physical activity work in relation to, to mental health? So hopefully that poll will magically appear. Lovely. So I can just see this on my screen, a real mix of uh, respondents. So some people are not feeling very confident at all. Probably most of you are in the middle somewhere. A couple of people are feeling more confident. And I would really encourage you to, to share your experiences um, in the chat as, as we're going today. I think that's really important. OK, just a second poll, just to get a sense of who's with us on, on the call. It's really important. Just want to understand um, that with our second poll is, are you currently engaging young people in your um, physical activity work for mental health outcomes. So you might be doing this in an existing group setting, so recognising we've all got mental health. You might be delivering targeted programmes um, to support mental health outcomes. You might be a clinician, sort of working in more clinical settings, or you might not be sure you might be from a different environment and you might want to pop in the chat where you're from. So just to get a sense of who is in the call, and it's looking like a really mixed picture. I don't know if you can see those results on your screen, but certainly on mine are really mixed. So that's that's really helpful. So thank you. We have got a few of the polls as we go through the, the presentation um, today. OK, so as we know, we've all got mental health and we're on this continuum from thriving to surviving mental wellness, good mental health to mental ill health. Um, and last, the last year has been a year like absolute no other. And prior to the pandemic, we knew that young pe people's mental health had sadly been declining. So back in 2017, one in nine children and young people had a mental health problem. Last summer, when the NHS um, Digital released their, their latest statistics so in 2020, that statistic is now one in six. So to go from one in nine to one in six was really concerning um, pre-pandemic. And that had been a trend for, for a number of years. We know some really worrying statistics, and sorry to, to start with these, especially after such an elation last night, but half of all mental health problems have been established by the age of 14, rising to 75% by the age of 24. So for us, this is why early intervention and supporting young people around their mental health, around their mental health literacy and giving them the support tools is absolutely um, fundamental. We also know in the UK that sadly suicide is the leading cause of death in young people, accounting for 14% 14 of deaths in that 10 to 19 year old age bracket. So we know that that number of children, young people sadly taking their own life has been increasing over the last, last 10 years. But it is low compared to other age groups, but it's still a massive concern for us. We've also seen trends from 2004 tracking all the way to 2020 that anxiety, depression and self-harm have all increased in children and young people. And of course, we know that self-harm can be a, a risk factor for suicide um, for people as well. But we also know that the problems themselves are getting more severe. So there's evidence that um, the number of visits to A&E by young people um, age 18 or under with a recorded diagnosis of a psychiatric condition has almost doubled in the last five years and has actually tripled since 2010. So the statistics we're seeing more young people are struggling with their mental health, more young people are sadly taking their own lives. The severity it has been increasing for a number of years. And we know that there's been a decrease in average happiness scores in 2020 amongst 15, 10 to 15 year olds. Um, 
in the UK. And that's been a downward trend by, um, noted by the Children's Society for some time. So sadly, it's, it's a challenging picture. And that's why it's so important that we're here today talking about mental health, but also really thinking about what role physical activity has in supporting good mental health. So how do young people talk about mental health? Well, young people don't use the same vocabulary that we do in terms of mental health terminology, but rather tell us about their experiences, about when they're feeling angry or frustrated. And they actually have told us that clinical terminology is rather off-putting and that they can feel really stigmatised by using those clin clinical terms. And they've also told us about the drivers, so the things that are causing uh, mental health problems in young people. So there's a number of factors that we've seen, so low levels of educational um, attainment, low paid work and that difficult job market, and that's been exacerbated in the last year, not being in education, employment or training, but also trauma has been a real um, a challenge for, for young people. So going for anything that's stressful, frightening or distressing events um, has impacted. But also there's so many things going on in young people's lives, you know, sadly, bullying, physical health conditions, long waiting lists for support, family difficulties, social media. We know that it can be really powerful, but it can also be really challenging. And of course, lo loneliness and social isolation. That coupled with the challenges of just growing up and being a teenager it feels a long time ago for me now. But remembering back, it was a difficult time. And then we add COVID into the mix. So a really challenging landscape. And so we know that COVID will leave a deep and lasting scar on millions in the, in the country. And we've all heard in the media or perhaps seen firsthand with our own children or friends and family members how it's impacted homeschooling, exams cancelled or the uncertainty, lack of access to the job market, worries about friends and families getting unwell, not being able to see those people that you enjoy spending time with. And we've seen further reliance on, on our screens for screen time. So we, the pandemic has worsened this trend that we were seeing around young people's mental health, particularly around young women. So young women aged 16 to 24 are severely affected um, by, by mental health problems in, in the data that we're seeing. So one in three young women, 16 to 24, said they had experienced at least one mental health problem. And that's much more than what we've seen against other groups. Two thirds of young people said that lockdown made their mental health worse um, and we saw more unhelpful coping strategies, so an increase in self-harming behaviours. Um, we also saw that young people felt that their, their mental health wasn't um, bad enough for them to get help and support. So it's a really worrying, worrying trend that people feel that they're not unwell enough or that they don't deserve help and support so don't reach out. And we, we, you've probably all seen the stats in the media from the Centre for Mental Health that one and a half million children, young people, um, it's predicted, will require additional support for their mental health in the coming years. But we also know that COVID has really exacerbated existing inequalities in young people's mental health. So the pandemic has hit those that were just getting by hardest um, economically and mentally. So children, young people, so 15 to 16, with a probable mental health disorder, were more than twice as likely to live in a household that had fallen behind in their payments than, than other children. So that link between, between poverty and mental health has just grown. And we also know that young people from racialized communities were more likely to have fallen behind at school or regress during this time. It is a worrying landscape, but young people have really told us that there's, there's hope for the future and there's an important role that we can all play in supporting their mental health. And as you can see there, we've got some exciting new research coming out just next week uh, with lots more statistics, particularly around young people's mental health, um, that we'll be, be launching um, and, and hopefully will help inform your work. So what is the role of physical activity in all this? There is less research uh, in terms of the, the impact on physical activity on children than in adults. However, the studies do show that exercise has a really positive impact on young people's mental health, particularly around depression and anxiety. And we've seen the importance of exercise is referenced in NICE guidelines for a range of um, disorders affecting young people. It's also um, a module on the Moving Medicine um, platform, which is for health professionals, um, and it ge gears them to have conversations about physical activity. So it can help in both the prevention, but also the treatment of mental health um, problems in young people. It helps with quality of life, individual and community development, mood, confidence, self-esteem, happiness, resilience, so many things. 
um, in terms of the, the support. But from some of our recent insight work through the research company and then through young people's interviews, we know that young people see this as a short term solution. So we know, unlike with physical health, that when you do um, physical activity, you can feel at the end of the activity the endorphins, the dopamine, that runner's high, and that has an instantaneous effect for, for many people. But young people recognise that it, whilst that's really positive and it helps them, it's something that helps them in the short term. So I think there's something we need, really need to consider here about how we um, use physical activity in young people's lives and give them that wraparound support um, uh, in terms of helping their, their mental health. We've also seen the impact of not being able to, to do physical activity during the first lockdown. You can see the statistics there that young people have actually said it has made their mental health worse by not being able to go to their clubs and groups. So how much physical activity do young people need? Well, those of you that are from the physical activity world are well versed in the chief medical uh, officer guidelines. Um, as we can see there, it, young people should be engaging in 60 minutes per day across a wide range of movement, muscular um, strengthening exercises as well. And like adults, it really reduce the time spent sedentary. Um, but we know that young people aren't doing enough physical activity. And certainly um, on the back of the, the second lockdown, that one in three children um, uh, aged seven to 16 were considered inactive at that time, not doing the, at least 30 minutes of activity a day. We also know there's inequalities when it comes to physical activity. So we saw that children from the most affluent families during lockdown were active, but those that weren't were the ones that, that sadly weren't getting active. So the inequalities uh, exist both for a physical activity lens and a mental health lens and something we really need to consider going forward. But of course, we need to take caution when we think about physical activity as something that supports our mental health. Um, if you have an eating disorder, if you have addictive behaviours, if you have an existing injury or at risk of injury, it can be a challenge and actually the physical activity can become a problem itself. And certainly from our experts by experience group, which includes young people, lots of students are involved. Many have told us, told us that during lockdown, this has been a real challenge. So we're hearing stories of people that when we could only go out once a day, we're going out and staying hours a day. Now, of course, I'm sure we'd all agree being active is good for us that level of physical activity can of course be dangerous. So it's really important we work together to develop a healthy relationship with physical activity. And remember, it's not a panacea, it doesn't fix everything, but it's a helpful tool. And we really need to focus on how it makes um, people feel. Okay, so when might it be um, important to young people? So through, through our research, through talking to young people, um, we've really um, found that it's important during periods of stress and transition. Um, so particularly um, during times of uh, exams, uh, travelling between schools, so there's been some great programmes such as England Athletics Run and Revise, Association of College Sports Mental Health Champion Schemes, Youth Sport Trust using physical activity um, to support transitions that can really help to build up the resilience, give young people those skills and self-esteem to, to aid them in those, those journeys. Um, similar to adults, that um correlation between lower activity and uh, risk of mental ill health go together so the less active we are the more likely we are to have a mental health problem so there are vulnerabilities associated to that so making sure that the least active people we are we are encouraging gently to find something that works for them that's fun and something that they enjoy but we have also seen an increased appreciation of physical activity during lockdown um, and this has been seen through a number of surveys so the youth sport trust found that um Despite lower levels of activity, young people, 27% of young people have said that doing PE, sport and exercise made them feel better during the restrictions, particularly for junior age um, uh, school children. And certainly in our own research, we found that 60% of young people said that being able to exercise or, or, or play sport had helped them to cope during that first lockdown. So half of young people actually said they, they want to do more physical activity in the future as they see it's something that really helps their, their mental health. We of course know that being outside has been valuable for us all during the pandemic. And actually it was one of the most popular coping strategies for young people and adults. So three quarters of young people use being active outside as a way to cope with their, their mental health. 
But of course, if you took part in a team sport, that's been a real challenge. Obviously, there were so many months when that just wasn't possible. And we know over three quarters of, of people who did take part in team sports said that the changes around them um, act, uh, impacted on their mental health. So to summarise, really, it is a helpful tool um, to support young people's mental health, both in the prevention and in the management. But we need to be really aware that it is a short term intervention and that it's something that we, we need to build that really he uh, healthy and positive relationship with. So how am I responding to the, the mental health crisis more broadly? Well, we have a whole range of programmes um, working with young people. We have an active youth voice network, so young people aged 11 to 25 shaping our work. We work with schools through our whole school approach, mentally healthy universities programme, policy and influencing work you would have seen just this week. We've been lobbying around sort of education reforms and, and mental health. We've worked with Twinkle, we have a partnership to help with um, resources for teachers and people in schools. And of course, in the sport and physical activity team, we've invested, as I've mentioned, in the strategic audience insight with the company and then. James will come on to, in just a moment, some more work that we're doing around workforce needs. But I just briefly wanted to introduce you to the children's coaching uh, collaboration. So in the last year, we've joined the collaboration uh, facilitated by Sport England. So it's a collective of child-centred coaches, PE teachers and professionals, policy makers, sports development expertise, child experts, and it's a really exciting um, project. Partners from across a range of sectors are coming together for the first time to really think about how we reframe physical activity, coaching, movement um, for young people. And it's a really um, strong movement for change. So there's a number of um, commitments around the, the collaboration. I hope it's something that you, you'll want to get more involved in. Um, you may remember that old saying that children uh, should be seen and not heard. Actually, what we've done at the Children's Coaching Collaboration is rip that up and said children should be seen and heard. And actually for, for good coaching, for good physical activity experiences for their physical and their mental health, we should be putting children's voice and centre to this, this work. So it's about creating those right conditions, as you can see there, about being child centred, making it fun, creating that good community. And as coaches and professionals, being educated to development. So there's a whole range of work that will be happening around um, policy influencing, campaigning around this. But we really know the most important thing for young people is they want it to be fun. That's the biggest driver for physical activity. We also know from our insight work, and it's no surprise, I'm sure, that um, one young person's experience, a uh, young person's experience, becomes the barrier for many. One positive experience makes the difference for, for many more. Young people have really told us that they um, they want support in a non-clinical setting, places where they already are, places that they're already at and that are familiar to them. So it's really important that we, we think about our role. We're not expecting physical activity providers to be experts in mental health, but we are there. We are a vital touch point in their life. So creating that, that environment where young people can thrive, but also that environment where young people can talk to us is absolutely key. So lots happening. Um, I'll hand over to James that will just uh, explain about an exciting project that um, you can you can hopefully all get involved in. Thanks very much, Hayley. Um, yes, yeah, so as we've touched on, uh, our targeted work with children and young people uh, is an exciting uh, emerging work area, both for mine and for many others across the sector. Uh, back in 2019, we commissioned stakeholder mapping to uncover how MIND could best support children and young people's mental health using physical activity. That research and that scoping work really helped us to gain a great insight into why organisations across the sector were running initiatives, what they looked like in practice, as well as some of the common challenges and how you might overcome these. This mapping exercise also led to some really key recommendations for us as a charity, which are outlined on this slide. Therefore, as part of our development year, which we entered into in April 2021, we've excitingly launched a Children and Young People's Workforce Project. Uh, so, moving on. Uh, sorry. So, from April up until the autumn, we'll be co-designing and then piloting focused resources to help the workplace to better understand and to support young people at risk of or experiencing mental health problems. 
UK Coaching's recent survey showed that 88% of coaches are concerned about poor physical or mental health of their participants. So over the course of the project, we'll be exploring similar themes. But before going into more detail, we also wanted to launch another poll. So just look at looking at the poll section, uh, which should be up on the right, it'd be great to know what concerns you may have about young people's mental health in a physical activity setting. Some of the options include kind of the number of people experiencing uh, mental health problems, feeling ill-equipped to talk to young people, the impact of uh, other uh, kind of frustration or anger, uh, the lack of access to service, or not knowing where to signpost. So if you're able to just fill out that poll now, that would be brilliant. So yeah, a lack of access to services coming through, but actually there's a real good spread across all the areas and something that we're really keen to explore a bit more with this piece of work. It's worth saying that by resources, we mean anything from booklets to e-learning to training videos to a social media campaign. At this stage of the project, we don't want to dictate how coaches or the workforce will receive this information, as actually we want them and young people to be working on deciding the best way to receive this messaging. We're also really aware that there's a great deal of information out there for the workforce, including our own MASPER e-learning course. Therefore, we're continuing to scope what's already out there. We want to stay abreast of who's working in this exciting area. And we'll also place a focus on how we embed whatever we create within the existing offer that's already available across the sector. Oh, sorry, just trying to bring up my next slide. There we go. Um, so yeah, in line with MIND's current strategy, which recognises supporting young people as one of our three key strategic development priorities, co-design will be at the heart of this project. So to provide oversight to all uh, stages of the project, we've established an external advisory group with Sport England, UK Coaching, as well as representatives from our regional networks. And like Hayley said, we've also established a young people steering group, which we've brought together out of youth, uh, MIND's Youth Voice Network which is a body of 200 young people. We'll be running insight sessions with a diverse range of children and people's groups to ascertain what support they want from their coaches and what they think they should know. But alongside this, we're also going to be launching a sector uh, survey for coaches and the workforce to gather insights into current confidence and knowledge levels about supporting young people. And to do this, uh, we'd love you to get involved and to help out our research. So you can do that obviously uh, now by kind of answering our two questions that we're going to finally, uh, final, finally end with in the poll now. The first being uh, in your kind of workplace or, or your role, what topics would you like to receive more information or training about? We know that there's so many ways of kind of gathering information and so much to learn. Hopefully today has been a great exercise, but would it be terminology that you'd like to know more about? Is it kind of awareness of different mental health conditions, how to adapt your activity, uh, the benefits of sports and physical activity is it how to promote positive mental health, the real life stories, or when and how to signpost. Well, coming out strong from the responses so far, um, how to adapt an activity is really, really quite key. And also how to promote positive mental health. That's really interesting to know. Um, and just finally then, before we do end, uh, we'll launch one final poll, uh, which is about how you'd like to receive this information. As mentioned, we'll be launching a really large survey across the workforce and coaching sector, and we'd love to gather insights from that. Please do share it kind of through your channels. But just, you know, whilst we have this opportunity, it'd be great to know how you personally like to receive uh, this information. So whether it's online information, information booklets, e-learning, social media or video content, face-to-face -face training, uh, or kind of getting uh, coaches and, and mental health professionals to share their experience. So if you're able to fill that out on the poll now, that would be brilliant insight for us. Just as you do that, um, to wrap up, it's worth saying that we're kind of always open to feedback and, and we'll be picking up on some of the great questions and comments in the chat below. Um, the work that we're doing in this area is very much just a starting piece. And actually, the insights that we'll be gathering this year will be really forming our work moving on uh, into phase three of our, of our partnership work with Sport England. Uh, coming up on the on the poll, I've just seen, so we've got a lot of uh, variants, but again, e-learning training and also gaining uh, mentoring or linking in with local networks is really key. And that brings us quite nicely on to my final slide, uh, which is about how you can get in touch and also access some of our existing resources.
So we've got an e-newsletter that you're welcome to sign up to. That goes out to over 100, uh, 1,400 people across the sport and physical activity sector, gaining insight into our work and, and the work we're doing with partners. You can also get in touch with us at sportatmind.org.uk. The email's on the slide and on our website as well. Um, you can get in touch to sign up to our regional network, which are across the UK, or to access more information about our e-learning training. Mind provides, uh, provides a number of information resources and work-based wellbeing training as well. So do look on our website for more information. Um, and that can be found at mind.org.uk slash sport. Sorry, mind.org.uk slash sport. And um, that's it from me. But Hayley, I'll just pass over to you to wrap up. Yeah, so just very quickly, we've obviously thrown a lot of information at you uh, and statistics. But as we've seen, physical activity has an important role in supporting young people's mental health, particularly as we come out of lockdown and respond to what is now a mental health crisis. There's lots going on around the, the workforce project, the coaching collaboration, the insight work with and then, and we'll be sharing that over, over the coming months. So do stay in touch. It's important that we focus on young people um, and helping them to build that healthy relationship with physical activity activity how it feels the fun the social elements and just being really realistic with ourselves that it's it's part of the solution it's not a panacea so young people you know want want physical activity to be on the menu um, and we'll think about how we collaborate really with colleagues we are a vital touch point in young people's lives and i think there's a real role that we can have in creating a environment where young people can thrive but at the same time recognizing the boundaries of the coach and not expecting you to be um experts in mental health so most importantly we need to put young people first and and ask them about what they want to shape their approach so thanks for listening and um do stay in touch and help shape our work